I'm curious too, like uh, you moving over to work with Unity, like um, what was that whole experience like for you um, in terms of like also what you're involved in now? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. You know, working in the visual effects industry was pretty awesome, but yeah, transitioning to Unity being real time, it's just, it's kind of nice just to see this like change of pace. I'm working in the labs department, so I'm kind of like, I'm allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> like I'm almost encouraged to make those mistakes to, because we have to figure out how things are going to be done. Whereas visual effects, it's like, no, no, you just, you got to do whatever you can, hack it together to make sure it works. Whereas mm -hmm. Unity, I'm like, well, I did this for a month. That didn't really work. So I'm just going to try it this way now. And then it's almost like I'm being promoted to do that stuff. So I really love the uh, the freedom of that. And so, yeah, most mostly focusing right now on just digital humans. Cool. And just seeing how, uh, you know, just trying to create believable digital humans, uh, looking at hair solutions, uh, skin solutions, uh, basically just all around character stuff. Forgive me for not knowing the title of it. I did see an amazing um, YouTube video the other day from Unity of uh, a more mature woman uh, with long oh, hair. The enemies demo? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any part of that, but I wish I did. It was so cool. I was just curious about that because, yeah, it just popped in my mind now, but um, I, I thought it was a smart decision to have someone who's slightly aged over, so, you know, the typical, like, young, flawless, beautiful woman because I feel like um, if you go back to a good example would be Beowulf back in, like, 2006, oh, you know, yeah. where Anthony Hopkins looks amazing and flawless, but then Angelina Jolie, because she's so flawless, looks completely fake uh, because of those imperfections. Like, for you, is that something that you find too? Is just, like, creative style like realism comes with the imperfections or or what are some of the kind of secret sauce that you look for uh yeah i think we got like the uncanny valley is something which is we've not got over it yet i mean we as a first still i can create something which is photorealistic and you believe it to be a photo like still wise but motion and movement it's still one of those things where it's, it's going to look uncanny valley still mm -hmm. and so i think it'll just take a little bit more research and time to get over that yeah. But yeah, I think I think we're on our way though, for sure. What limitations, if any, are you finding with, let's say, your typical process for doing things when, let's say, you're doing in V-Ray versus um, something that's going to a real-time engine? Like real-time is just like you don't get the like let's say you talk about lighting, for example. You don't get the quite the like the number of like uh, rays, I guess, whatever you call them. But it's like mm -hmm. the quality isn't as good as like a static render just yet. I'm sure, like in time, the, the like yeah, dial all samples to 100, you know. <laughs> yeah. So right now I'm just discovering like uh, the, the lack of quality in real time. So that's kind of one of my jobs is trying to help push that and make things more believable. But yeah, I think static renders like V-Ray, where you can just render an image, even if it takes like 10 minutes or something, it still looks better. Yeah. 